vitamin K is called vitamin K because in German the word coagulation starts with K not with C unlike English and we all know that coagulation process is heavily heavily dependent on this vitamin there is a vitamin K so that's how the vitamin K got its name now this session is particularly about vitamin K deficiency associated bleeding in the newborns VKDB which is previously known as hemorrhagic disease of the newborns so hemorrhagic disease of the newborns or vitamin K deficiency bleeding both the same thing and we are going to discuss three remarkable features of this VKDB so number one we need to understand what is VKDB so VKDB or vitamin K deficiency bleeding or hemorrhagic disease of the newborn is a spontaneous bleeding in the newborn which occurs due to certain coagulation factor deficiency which are dependent on the synth on their synthesis on the vitamin K and we all know that what are those vitamins there are four vitamins which are the four factors which are there whose synthesis is dependent on the vitamin K they are coagulation factor 2 prothrombin coagulation factor 7 coagulation factor 9 and coagulation factor 10 and in case you confuse there is a popular mnemonic also there students heavily use that I have noted 2 plus 7 makes it 9 not 10 so 2 plus 7 makes it 9 not 10 this way you can remember the 2 7 9 10 these are the four factors coalition factors whose synthesis is dependent on the vitamin K so obviously uh, from this you understand that when this uh, these factors will be deficient the child the newborn would be at risk of developing bleeding the bleeding can occur in the form of skin bleeding uh, it can occur in form of nasal bleeding it can occur in form of gastrointestinal bleeding and even the ICH intracranial hemorrhage here it's a very important concept comes that why the newborns are so much prone for vitamin K deficiency there are multiple reasons for that but I can highlight three important reasons number one that usually the breast milk they don't contain much amount or adequate amount of vitamin K this is the reason number one so newborns are always at risk until unless they have given the prophylactic injection for vitamin K at birth second thing is that uh, that usually the newborns they have sterile gut and the sterile gut bacteria are not there and they cannot synthesize the vitamin K and third thing is that that uh, placental passage of vitamin K is also not possible so these are the three reasons that uh, impaired the, the placental passage usually don't occur of vitamin K second thing is that breast milk is not does not contain an adequate amount and third thing is sterile gut is there in the infants so obviously newborn by default is uh, prone to develop vitamin K deficiency until unless he has given already given prophylactic injection so what happens that these children who are not given injection they can prophylactic uh, therapy is not provided they are at risk of the developing this spontaneous bleeding as I mentioned now I will come to the third and most important aspect is that how to diagnose this what are the diagnostic parameters which are there which can help you to diagnose this so if you look at the coagulation profile in a vitamin K deficiency associated bleeding obviously platelet would be normal and bleeding time would be normal because platelet and bleeding time they are concerned about the primary hemostasis and this is nothing to do with primary hemostasis this is impacting the secondary hemostasis the coagulation pathway in the secondary hemostasis we look PT and INR would be both prolonged because INR international normalized ratio is basically modified form of PT prothrombin time and prothrombin time uh, primarily checks the factor 7 the 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 role of prothrombin time is to check the extrinsic pathway and the common coagulation pathway but primarily it checks the extrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway we all know that factor 7 is there and vitamin K plays a very important role in the synthesis of the factor 7 so obviously the prothrombin time would be prolonged and INR would be prolonged in all cases of vitamin K deficiency the bleeding here there is another confusion is there that is APTT prolonged or normal in case of vitamin K deficiency the answer is that in mild cases of vitamin K deficiency APTT can be normal but in severe cases usually vitamin K deficiency the APTT is also prolonged the reason is why 
because APT is checking your intrinsic coagulation pathway. And if you note that there are four factors in the intrinsic coagulation pathway, factor 12, factor 11, factor 9 and factor 8. And 9 is one of the factor which is also dependent on the synthesis of the uh, on the vitamin K. So obviously intrinsic coagulation pathway is also impacted by the vitamin K. And that's why usually the APTT can also be prolonged due to vitamin K deficiency. This is another point that you need to keep in mind. So uh, the point is that that PT and INR would be prolonged, bleeding time would be normal and APTT can be prolonged particularly in the severe cases of the vitamin K deficiency. So that's all you need to know about this VKDB or HTN. Thank you.